Good afternoon and uh, good morning. Uh, depends on uh, where you are right now. Uh, I'm happy to see you all in good shape. Um, Brian, Grzegorz and uh, Michał are here to talk how to break into the US music industry. And let me remind uh, our viewers that this webinar is presented by the uh, Polish Cultural Institute in New York. Uh, quick information for uh, everyone watching us. Uh, there is a chat box on, on YouTube and you can use it to uh, uh, send, to ask us some questions. Our guests will try to uh, answer a couple of them uh, by the end uh, of this meeting. Also any kind of feedback would be uh, appreciated. Uh, so everyone's ready? Yeah. Right. Um, we suppose to talk how to break into the American music industry. Um, is that even possible on, on a larger scale? After all, uh, this is a very competitive uh, market. Uh, Brian, this one's for you. Um, I guess it depends how you define larger scale. I, I think it is definitely possible for um, smaller and mid-size bands to you know, make it, and obviously even larger ones. Um, but the, the US market is tricky um, a lot because it's just at the moment, with the current administration, it's hard to get into the US. Um, visas are really expensive um, and um, they're time consuming to fill out, which Trupa Trupa knows all about. But um, yeah, I, I think it's definitely, it's definitely possible um, to, to break into the US market for sure um, for international bands. And where to start? I mean, let's assume I have a band and, and uh, I think I'm good enough to do, to do that. So uh, I put uh, my songs on, on Bandcamp, YouTube, Spotify, and, uh, and what's next? Uh, should I just wait and, and let people discover my, my music or, or what to do? Oh, I, th I think what I was saying was that, um, you know, once you kind of build your community and, you know, you you kind of work on like um, your popularity and your like in your scene and your city, your country, then you start to expand it out. Um, what, you know, what's, there's several things you could do. One is start to contact press and do marketing in the, the countries like, you know, the U S you're interested in. Um, and then uh, try to get noticed that way. I, I find a way that a lot of at least bands in the punk indie rock scene have done it over the years is that, um, let's say you're a Troopa Troopa, you, you find a band in the U.S. that you really like, and then you invite them over to Poland to do a tour with you in exchange. You get them to take you on a tour of the U.S. So I think like the kind of joint tour things work a lot where um, bands will come over to the U.S. with a band they've toured Europe or Japan or wherever with, um, and then they kind of like trade off that way. And I think that's like a really interesting way of doing things. Um, I think playing like international festivals where, you know, people from the music industry in the US will be at is uh, important. That's actually how I met Trupa Trupa was at um, Ice and Airwaves. Um, and I, I think events like that or like, you know, there's like Pitchfork in Paris and things like that um, are good ways to get noticed by people in the US without, you know, necessarily having to come to the US. Um, but like one of my bands back a long time ago, um, Frodus did a tour with the band Refused who got ended up being pretty big later, but they, they did it where um, Refuse took them around Scandinavia and then uh, Frodus took them around the US. Um, and that's happened a lot of times. And I think that can be, that sort of thing's extremely helpful where you try to match up with a band that you really like and then has some sort of draw um, in the US or Canada or wherever you want him to go to um, and try to book each other tours. Uh, before we elaborate on some of this, uh, some of these topics we've mentioned. Uh, let me ask you a question. Why would American label want to sign a band from, from, from Poland? Uh, uh, is it better to sound exotic, like, uh, unlike anything uh, else? Or should we be like other bands uh, in your roster only better? It's because my haircut. Come yeah. On, <laughs> yeah. Well, Trooper Trooper had a special power. So, um, <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, that's a hard question. I think you just want to be yourself and play the music that you, you like and enjoy. And then you try to find 
um, you know, record label or people that you want to work with that are like-minded or maybe sound the same or just that you respect. Um, I don't, I don't think you want to try to sound a certain way to, to get signed. I think then, you know, it doesn't seem, um, I think people can just tell that's what you're doing basically. I think, you know, you just want to do what you're doing and just do it well and have passion behind it. And I think people can feel the passion and then that's like, they want to work with people that they know are passionate about what they're doing and they're putting their, their heart into it. Uh, let me ask you a question, Brian, because this is, this is connected. Like, uh, do you, do you watch on the, on the nationality or the country where the artist is coming from at all? Like when you, when you think about uh, your artistic choices, does it matter? Is it, is it a kind of label for, for bands at all? Well, that's an interesting question. Not, not really, but I, I think there is, there is the realistic part behind it of um, the touring aspect behind it. Um, and just knowing that, well, you, A, you could have a language barrier with one that you need to kind of like consider of like, how, how is this going to work? Um, are we going to be able to communicate and work well together? But then I think, you know, just um, figuring out like if the band's going to be able to tour the US, um, if that's a realistic thing and does that matter? Because maybe it doesn't. Maybe, you know, they're, the band is already doing so well in Europe and other places that it doesn't, if they never make it to the US, it's not that big of a deal. But I think it is a consideration of just if the if they're able to make it over over for sure. But I mean, it is it is a hard thing to do at the moment. There's no doubt because you mm -hmm. have to get your visas. You have to you know find a booking agent for the band. Um, the band's going to probably lose a lot of money coming over the first time, which, um, yeah, and it's it's definitely it's a grind. You have to you're it takes a couple tours of the U.S. To, to get people to pay any kind of attention. Even if you have the breath, best booking agent and the best press people in the world, it's not, you're gonna start playing to five or 10 people in most places. Mm -hmm. I agree, I agree. Sorry, go ahead. I agree, I said, I agree, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I you know five, your tour. Five, 10, 15, yeah, 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 I know. I mean, yeah, your tour. Have you been perfect on that? Sure. Sorry? Have you been there and done that? Have you have you played for five to fifteen people in US? Thousands, fifteen thousand. Yeah. Only only in thousands. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's hard to get people out. I mean, in, in certain cities, um, you know, you can get the connection of the country you're from. Like you can get like you know, so like in this example, you can work with like the Polish government or the you know institutes and get them to help promote the shows. And in certain in larger cities like DC, New York, Boston, you can get them to help get people out. Cause a lot of people are like, oh, that's great. There's a band from Poland playing. I want to, you know, go. But in, when you're playing like, you know in the Midwest or the South or stuff like that becomes harder and harder to do. Um, so I think that's why it's really important to try to find a band. It's hard to do, but I think it is important to try to find a band to, to tour with that's um, an American band that can draw more people than you can just to get your name out there to start with. Um, and offering them an exchange, like, hey, if you take us on tour of the US, you know, we'll book us a week long tour in Poland for you in exchange or something like that. It's, I mean, it's, like, it's, a hard, it's a hard market. It's hard to get people's attention. Even if, even if you're an American band in the US, it's hard to get people to pay attention to you. It's, I mean, just because you're from Poland does, doesn't make it necessarily <laughs> harder. It, it just, it's hard in general. It's just because the touring becomes more difficult. Mm -hmm. But uh, what about the audience? Are they uh, interested in discovering new artists uh, from abroad or, or is it uh, more difficult for foreign band to, to, to break through in America than the local one? Um, I don't know. I, I think it's kind of, a little of both. I mean, I think there are some people that are really interested in learning about bands from around the world that um, are actually interested in like being like, oh, I just found this, you know, you know, this band from South Africa or whatever. Like, I think there are people that are interested in exploring like music from all around the world. Um, so I don't think like it's, if you're from Poland, it's, 
it's a hindrance on people paying attention to you. Um, I, I think with the press thing, it gets down to too. Like there are a lot of, and with the trooper trooper troop stuff, it, like it's like you can say like basically like if you're not if you're not playing shows, sometimes it's get hard to get people to write about you like in the press because they're like, well, let us know when their U.S. tour is, then we'll write about them. So that like their interest will be gets a great record, but we also have to have some tour dates behind it to like to get enough clicks to write about it. Um, and that, that again, kind of becomes a problem. But there, there's sites like Bandcamp that are really good about highlighting international music and deep diving on stuff. Um, and, I, and I think people are really into um, reading that stuff and purchasing music that way. Uh -huh. um, we already know that uh, uh, you cannot conquer America by just using these online tools, but there's plenty of them. And uh, do they help? I mean, is it easier now uh, to get it done than, for example, uh, 20 years ago? And uh, which are like, uh, which of them are necessary and which are like not really relevant? You, you've mentioned Bandcamp. Bandcamp is probably like the, the, the most important now for, for like independent music, right? And what else? Yeah, it's kind of funny. I, I have this discussion with people a lot, just as a general thing. Like, 20 years ago, when I started doing this, like, things were actually easier in many aspects because there was less there was less things to do, right? So you would um, make a record. You'd send it to distributors and stores. You send it to college radio or, like, independent radio. And then you'd send it out to, like, magazines for review, reviews. And you'd play some, like, ads in magazines, right? And there was just, like... But now you have to, like do kind of all those things plus have all these like different social um, media platforms, which are obviously a lot of them you have to keep track of. Then you have to um, be on all the streaming services and try to get them to push it. Um, there's just, there's just more, there's more work basically for like less sales, if that makes sense. So it's just, there's just way more like avenues and directions to go in um, that you have to kind of stay on top of um, than there used to be. So I think that like before, if you were, let's say, a band from Poland and someone in the U.S. put you out, it was actually, you might get actually noticed more because there were less, there was actually less stuff. But now it's like so hard to weed through. Like if you just go to Spotify or any of these streaming sites, it's just hard to like ex find music almost because there's just so much because everyone's making their own music and uploading it. So then it's kind of like weeding through it all. It's, I think it's actually, um, it's harder to get people's attention. Because I think people listen to like a record once and they just kind of forget about listening to the next record and listen to the next record because people, a lot of times people don't own physical items anymore either. So um, they just kind of like stream and then just kind of forget about it. Um, so I, I think, you know, it's, it's hard to keep people's attention. Um, so I think a lot of it's like active engagement, which Troopa Troopa is really good at. It's like you want to, you know, you have to like do things like in like, six to eight week intervals of like having a new video to promote and like blast out or like kind of re like releasing singles and like having having news items that kind of keep people engaged and captivated and just like reminding people that you're out there and giving them new content all the time so it's it's actually kind of more work in that way because you're always have to having to provide people content or remind people you're around um but by the way Zegers is, is very famous in Poland uh, about the fact of being super hyperactive in terms of informing the, the world around about the band's activities, which is good for you because it works. He's famous in the oh, US. It's, um, oh, it's, not, it's not only in, the, in Poland. It's, yeah, he's it's, famous in the US for this too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so my question not is so like, special, we have. Uh, hmm? Sorry, what was your question? Okay, let, me, not, let me get I to the point. My question is how many technically Technically, how many hours a day you need to actually sacrifice to keep things going when you do it as a self-manager? Is that a question for me or for him? No, this is a question for Grzegorz. Yeah. Like, how much your time mm. it actually consume you, you know, like, besides the other things you do? Is it like, a, you know, the serious job or you can actually, you know, combine it with, with other... I, I, I don't know because I don't I 
I'm doing it all the time in some way, but, but I'm also a poet and I also got another job. I think that I, I don't count this time because I really love it. And that, I think that's, that's the point of everything I do. And most of people I, uh, I know are doing their stuff because they love it. So, so, you know, I'm addicted to that. I'm addicted to music and to, to, to relations, to emails, to, to chatting, to talking, to, to, and you know about it, especially. So, so sure, I, I think that the, the only method to, to make something is to be a truly believer of yourself in some way and the others, of course. Yeah, so I, a kind of six, six, six hours per day, let's say, four, six, four, six. Something. I mean, that, that's obviously an extreme example, though. Like, not everyone's going to have that kind of time to do that. Um, mm -hmm. And you're, you kind of have to pick, I mean, you like, you're very good, obviously, at keeping in touch with everyone and, like, letting people know. And that's, you know, why it's been, why it's ineffective. Um, like, some people that don't have as much time you know, you have to pick your battles and, and kind of do things. But I mean, I, I think a lot of this is just like, you want to, you want to grow your band organically and then have people take notice. Cause if you're, if you're forcing it on people that can turn people off. So like you, you know, you want to like basically just really work on the music and then like have that be as best as possible and then, you know, grow it and then have people start to take notice and then kind of like, you know, start to get in touch with people and like tell people about what you're doing. But I think if you start telling people what you're doing when you have barely done anything, it's not it's not effective. Yeah, I think that that that, that Brian is is right here, especially here. That yeah, that of course the most important thing is the music. And if you've got a music, you've got something you want to share it. That's cool. But yeah, but 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 the most important thing is this this musical way. And yeah, to have you know, EP, LP, you know some new video, some con tiny desk concert, etc., etc. Something to, to share, to, to connect, to communicate, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, there, there's a whole industry of people, especially in the United States, that will take, that will take your money and, and say, oh, we'll help promote your band and market your band in the US. And you could spend tens of thousands of dollars and get nothing out of it. You'll get like one review on some blog you've never heard of. Like that's one thing you really need to be careful of is like you, you don't want to like, you can always find a press person to pay. Um, they'll be like, yeah, for $3,000 a month, we'll, we'll promote your band in the US. But it's, you got to think about like what you're getting back for that money. Like you're not going to make your $10,000 back in streaming sales. So then it's like, what are you trying to accomplish? So I think, you know, really growing your band by, um, by just being, yeah, working on your music and then, you know, sharing it as, with as many people as possible and kind of growing it that way. And then when there's a need, you get like a press person and stuff. But if you, if you automatically go the route of like, we're just going to hire this management team and pay these people to do stuff, you, it's probably not going to work other than you're going to lose a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you a question about uh, South by Southwest uh, uh, because people say it's a gateway to, to American market and to, uh, is it like the most important one or is it like the only way for the indie artist to, to get into, into US and, and how to do that actually? I mean, how to, how to, uh, what are the first steps? How did you do that? Grzegorz, and what would you advise? Well, well, actually all of you, because all of you have experiences with, with this event. Yeah, by, by the way, I, I, I remember it was many years ago, but you had uh, your stage at South by Southwest. Am I right? Low, low it records. I had a what? A showcase? Yeah, at the South stage. by Southwest, you had your stage. At oh, South yeah, by we've done Southwest. A yeah, it's been a couple of years since we've done that. It, well, you guys played South by Southwest like two years ago, right? Yeah, 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 we, yeah, 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 yeah. I just mentioned about, about, yeah, you, yeah, but you were the first. Yeah, so, so, so yeah, my, my opinion is that, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy big festival, but we were, we were super lucky because of this festival. We, 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 in some way, we killed two editions uh, by a row. So 2018 and 2019, and we were in top 10 Rolling Stone, et cetera, et cetera. So, so it was super crazy, super chaotic, uh, but I guess we are lucky to these super chaotic uh, situations and we know how to operate in very critical moments. 
So for us, so these two editions of South by Southwest were, were really important. We met there Bob Boylan or David Freaky from Rolling Stone. And, and we, yeah, we had, we, we, we established there a lot of very, very uh, important, great connections, which then became a real friendship connections. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I can say only very good things about South by Southwest, but of course I know it's a super hard festival and I know a lot of stories about, about, uh, about super, a lot of bad stories about this festival. So, so yeah, yeah. But I really, we, we, are, we are really lucky to unlucky stuff, we as a Trupa Trupa. So if something is fucked up in some way, we, we are happy. Okay, one more technical question for me about South by Southwest. How many partners in crime you had when you, when you did your first and second tour to, to Austin? Like how many people were helping you to, you know, set up the meetings or additional uh, gigs, etc., etc. Did you have a team that was working with you? Mm. There was one big fan, he, uh, and he's still, uh, Jim McQueen, the, the program director of the current radio. So he was helping a lot. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, he, he, was, he was the only one. But one year, one, one, one year later, there was a whole team around us. So, so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that networking and is super important. Yeah. But the first, uh, the first one was uh, mostly by your own, right? Like everything that was done the, the first time? Is yeah, I think so. Most of it, and and it, it was very yeah. But but it's not so. It's not so. It's not so hard. I think that most of bands. When I'm talking with some bands that are going on showcases, so for example, Polish bands, and most of Polish bands don't contact with journalists uh, and with uh, music partners from music business from industry and uh, uh, in. I don't know why they don't do it, or maybe I know uh, that they are shy, or they think that it's 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 not ethical, or it's illegal, or it's uh, too offen offensive. I, I don't know. Uh, but but uh, a lot of artists, and you know about it, a lot of artists are going on showcases and they don't connect with the music industry, and and that's all. And it's a rather sad story after all. Uh, answering your question, Yara. Uh, I wouldn't say this is the only gate to the American market, but this is uh, truly the biggest event, worldwide event like this, which basically make, make, makes it crazy. Just for those who've never been there, imagine around 120 venues organizing uh, showcases for, uh, during the same time, uh, like each of the venues is presenting, I don't know, five bands that's happening that's happening during the day. And then you have to count uh, the second amount of uh, events, networking events and, and showcases, which are closed doors or generally external events not included in official program. So the scale of it is, is just nasty. And, uh, and if you don't have a proper plan and, and proper agenda, then, then, then you're actually, uh, then, you, then you're automatically lost. The special thing about South by Southwest is actually, I don't know if that works with, uh, with other showcases like this, but when you're a European band and you're crossing the border, I think this is only the one and only exception where, when you actually don't have to have uh, the proper visa, performance visa, for playing official uh, gig at South by Southwest. If you do any other gigs, the same time you automatically need to have the visa but i think this is an exception would you agree with me yeah this, this is the only one yeah this is an exception yeah yeah and there's kind of two south by southwest too there's like the official there's the official and then there's the all the other stuff that happens there so you could go to austin never have applied to south by southwest and have an official show and you could still play like 10 to 15 times in two days like there's just so many, so many different things going on. Um, I mean, I've seen bands do it. I'm not saying that's a good idea, especially if you're coming from overseas that you just show up and you're like, I played this show. But there's plenty of, um, there's plenty of people that just set up like in parking garages, parking lots, 
like wherever they just start playing um especially like in the like especially like with punk stuff like there'll be shows at like three or four in the morning that will just be like okay there's this show now that's on this bridge on the other side of town that's gonna be crazy everyone head that way you know and then everyone just goes and they'll just be like this crazy thing that just got set up um so i mean if you are gonna go you want to try to play as many times as possible and maximize it and just play to as many people as you can um, you don't want to go and just play the one, like, if you get accepted, just the one, one or two shows they give you. Because um, a lot of those shows are less attended than the non-official shows. And uh, how to get there? I mean, where to start? Uh, do I apply online and, and, and do what? Yeah, yeah you, you are, you are up applying online and that's all. But of course, if you've got uh, your booking agency, it's much more easier because they they, they know they they know they know uh, everyone. So first time we apl we just applied, and second one we 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 were invited. So we didn't pay for this fee, applying fee, etc. But they, they did that because the first one was really a big success. So it was kind of a, you know it was kind of a example of a band who who made it so the second one was kind of a victory uh, trip yeah i mean i think for the other like the non-shows a lot of times what bands will do is they'll go on facebook or twitter and kind of like they'll look up like south by southwest unofficial shows and they'll they'll find the other ones and then they'll send a message to the promoter or whoever's running the page and say can my band play the show too I mean, I think there's a lot of that that happens. Like people will just find out months in advance of like the shows going on and they'll try to get their band added. Um, I mean, it's it's definitely a lot to, <laughs> there's a lot going on. I mean, there's definitely, one, once you get there, even just getting to the venue is, is such a hassle because they block off the street so many, so many blocks in advance and like hotel rooms are booked a year out. Um, you know, so you might be staying 20 or 30 miles away and then you might have to park a mile away from your venue and lug your gear. And it's, it's a logistical nightmare, There's, that's for sure. And bomb attacks two years ago, for example. Yeah, it's really Yeah, I mean, it's, it's changed a lot over the years, though, too. I mean, the, the official South by Southwest has tried to crack down a little bit on the unofficial shows because they're not making money off of them. So they're, they're trying to. Um, but I think the real spirit is really on the unofficial stuff that, that goes on. Um, yeah, because it's a, it's a really expensive thing to attend if you get a, a regular badge. It's a few thousand dollars, I think. A few thousand dollars for, for what? If you no, want to attend. Ah, all right, all right. If you want to uh, attend, not as a band, but just as like, if I'm just going as a music lover, if you get a, as a label, yeah, all right, all right, I understand, yeah, yeah. So I think there are a lot of people but, but, that, that never pay and they only go to the unofficial shows and they never go. Yeah, but but I, I can say, I, I know that Iceland Airwaves, yeah, are Iceland Airwaves and South by Southwest, but, but a lot of American press is, and a lot of American industries attending to Iceland Airwaves. So I think, in some way, it's also a very important showcase for uh, American industry, don't you think, Brian? Yeah, I think, well, the nice thing about Iceland Airways is it's just, it's smaller. It's a smaller town. There's less venues. There's less bands. Um, it's a prettier location. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, it's a great, it's a great festival. Um, you know, and that's where we originally met, obviously, but I, I think it's, it's easier to concentrate on music almost there. Um, and there are other festivals like that, but I, I think Ice and Air, especially, you know, how long of a flight is that from you? Like five hours? It's a lot closer than flying to Austin. Three, three. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Three hours, yeah. Something like yeah. that. I was sleeping, I don't know. But yeah. I met, I, yeah, we met you there. So yeah, it was a key festival for us, yeah. Yeah, but a lot of music press goes to that. Um, and like Pitchfork Paris. I mean, there are there are definitely festivals. I mean, there's a ton of them. I don't know. I can't even speculate what's going to be left after this year. I mean, so many festivals may never come back. So it's hard to kind of guess. Yeah, but but yeah, yeah, but but I I, I just remind yeah yeah I just yeah the paradigm thing was also made on, on Iceland Airways because 
Tom sent her, his agent uh, to this festival to check us. So yeah, I think it's important festival for USA industry for, for sure. Yeah, yeah and, ice, and ice and airwaves will still happen again next year. And I'm pretty sure South by Southwest will, though I think they're in a big budget hole now. But there are some other festivals like mid sized festivals that may never restart again just because they might have lost too much money not having a festival this year. I guess we'll just have to see what's what's out there in 2021. But I, I think in general, festivals are um, are the almost easiest way to get someone to come to your show, like a music writer or something. Because let's say you're just playing New York City and then you're hitting up a bunch of writers in New York, like come see my band on a Wednesday night. They're probably a lot more unlikely to do it than if they're already at South by Southwest and you're like, I'm playing a block from your hotel and you're already at a music festival. So it's probably a lot yeah. easier to get them to come out to a festival to see you than just the fact you're randomly playing New York City on a Wednesday night. Um, what I've heard is that uh, you don't need visa to perform at South by Southwest, uh, but uh, what are the other formal requirements for for foreign acts to to actually perform in the United States? Uh, so we, we, we need art visa. Uh, and it's super complicated mm, and it's super expensive and now it's even more expensive what so one, uh, one year ago it was a cost it was kind of a, uh, four four thousand dollars three thousand dollars and now it's five thousand uh, dollars for a band for a, for a, now it's it's much more much more uh, Expensive. So, that's for two, so that's for two years, right? So sorry, it's for every two years. No, no, it's it's for one year. That's one year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so now it's much more expensive. But I hope that maybe Joe Biden team will change it, please. Anyway, uh, it's super expensive, and and the process is 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 quite long. It's kind of a uh, six month months. Maybe maybe longer. Of course, you can you it can happen uh, faster, but it's even more expensive. So usually you should just mm, do it by some company uh, in US, uh, so, so with, so, with, by some lawyer, and and and, and yeah, and, and and they can help. But of course, they 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 they, they take some money for it. So I think it's it's really hard to to be in some way visible uh, uh, in US, but I think it's a really great, crazy trip. So it's worth. I mean, there's certainly some people, I'm not recommending this, but there's certainly some people that just don't fly with their equipment and they just come over as tourists. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are there are things people do, but the, the, official, the official route is certainly expensive. And also how much, how much taxes did you get withhold? Withheld every night, like fifty percent. Do you remember? I don't remember. They, I don't they, remember. The club will, will withhold money from you, and then you have to apply to get it back, basically. So then, mm -hmm. like, I have a friend's band that's from Canada, and they had to get like a lawyer, basically, like to just go after, like, to re get the money every because they would they would tour the states like like a hundred and hundred and fifty days a year. So they were they were doing pretty well, but you know, every night the club would just have to withhold money because they were a foreign band. Um, and then they have to claim it back. They don't. They certainly don't make it easy. It's it's really disappointing. Like it's you think just like cultural cultural exchange and you know exchange of ideas and stuff would be a, a lot easier, but they they do not make it easy um, to come over here. And does it pay off, or when when does it pay off? I mean, I mean, uh, how much uh, should a band uh, have to to tour, and and how big crowds? Uh, they have to bring to, to, to the venues to, to actually bring some money back from the from, uh, United States? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, that's a good question. I mean, I think, you know, with a lot of countries, it's good to try to work with your, um, like, you know, an institute or embassies and see if they have a budget for any of this stuff. Um, because like I know like in Iceland they do and Poland they do like I think a lot of a lot of countries they they're able to like work with the U.S. government and like maybe make things a little easier or there's some like there's some money for it. Um, 
I mean, sometimes you'll get one, you know, you'll get one concert offer that could be like a few thousand dollars and then like you can pay off your trip pretty fast. But if you're just coming over here and literally paying, playing to 10 or 20 people a night, it's going to take quite a while to make that up. Um, I mean, I think, I think you want to maximize if you have a year long visa, you want to play as many shows within that year as possible because you're probably not going to, with the flights too, you're not going to want to fly here multiple times. You probably just want to do, you know, one four to six week tour and just maximize it. And uh, how about uh, financial support, Michal? Uh, um, there is uh, Adam Mickiewicz Institute, there is Music Expert Poland. Uh, anyone else? And, and what, uh, what can you actually offer? What can artists count on? Uh, basically our experience in the first place, because uh, last 10 years uh, with Don't Panic Me from Poland, we've been, we've been working with a few hundred artists from Poland trying, trying uh, to make baby steps in other countries. We've been also responsible for, uh, for the stage at South by Southwest, I think from 2010, 2013. Which slightly opened doors for, for Polish bands because then organizers realized like, hey, actually those guys from Poland get, get a little support so they can make it. So once we stopped doing uh, our showcase, uh, you know, the, the regular amount of, uh, of bands from Poland performing in, in Austin actually uh, got, got higher. But anyway, uh, we got some programs which are dedicated to support uh, touring bands, touring artists in, in, in general. But this is for the gasoline money if you if you rent a van. This is for the flights if you if you go any farther. And this is for accommodation. And we get a uh, handy one which is happening once every month, so you can basically apply on a, on your daily basis. It's called Polish culture around the world. We get another one called Play Zagraito, which was dedicated to those who actually put the foot in the door and they have more strategic vision how they how they willing to do this is for Trupa Trupa. <laughs> uh, how they're willing to build their position in, 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 in the foreign markets. And this is not dedicated specifically to uh, to the to the cost of touring, but this is we, we, we try to keep it as much open as possible in, in, in terms of uh, categories and costs. Also important notice about Polish culture around the world is that this, this program before uh, lockdown, it was extremely popular. So you never, as an artist, you never were able to get 100% of, uh, of, of the money you were applying for. Those days it's, it's much easier because not so many people apply those days. And also uh, the whole regulations about this program became more, uh, more softy, let's say, like, like there are additional costs that you can, you can actually uh, uh, put, like especially those which are connected with online activities. Um, but anyway, going back to, to the other side of, 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 uh, of our support, uh, we try to stay flexible and actually ask bands uh, what are your real need and how we can actually meet each other. Uh, maybe the, bad, the sad news uh, about it is like the Institute is, is, uh, is, is having a serious uh, program shift this year. So from the new year, we're going to support uh, this way. We're going to support mostly uh, jazz and uh, world music slash roots slash uh, folk and anything which is somehow connected to that universe. But uh, this is the last year when uh, Don't Panic is operating on, on, on that mode of uh, the platform which is supporting Polish artists abroad and managers and, and people behind the bands who are uh, also doing jobs for, for them. Uh, the new address for, uh, for them would be, I guess, Music Export Office, which is uh, supporting artists with massive program of workshops and seminars and, 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 and just you know, get together events as well. But as far as I know in their mission, there is no strictly like a simple financial support for, for, for artists. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I think we're getting richer and richer with possibilities, how, how you can actually, you know, 
uh, get get the fuel to to your car, you know, to go. Yeah. And what are the requirements? I mean, everyone can apply, uh, um, or are there any like things that that artists or, or bands uh, uh, have to do in order to to get the support? I mean, do they have to have like a valid uh, contract for a festival or or or, or recording contract with foreign label? I think we don't ask for contracts, but if you ask for a tour in Brazil you or Mexico, you need to have uh, confirmed bookings. That's, that's for sure. You actually, this is, this is needs to be the solid, the solid thing. I mean, there are some exclusions like in, in terms of uh, Polish culture around the world. This is the program that is coming straight from the Ministry of Culture and we are operating this program. So also the regulations comes from there and in that case, you need to have a Polish passport, which may, makes things more difficult if you are in a jazz band and you are the only Polish guy in a the band, then you are the only one who can actually apply directly. Mm, there is no obstacles like this in terms of uh, Zagrajto. This is this is much much simpler and much much open. This is kind of experimental grant where we try to push the walls uh, as as far as possible from each other. You know, like, make some space for it's not easy it's not easy to operate like this we we uh, we are bureaucrats you know so <laughs> we more for like, is, is it more for like established acts or or is it for for newcomers as well it's for everyone who has the serious scenario how how the future events could look like you know it's it's not for those who are trying to get uh, one gig at the showcase festival or you know one-way trip. Uh, if you if you if you can actually, uh, you know, we have some serious Q and A's for for all those artists. And in in case of Zagreto, they they have to go through their uh, archives and deliver us uh, deliver us knowledge, us and and them at the same time uh, about uh, about their past achievements, about uh, about uh, the, the tools they have, about the plans, the short time plans, plans according to the event and uh, and three to five years, uh, you know, vision. So, so I don't treat this program only in terms of uh, financial support. I think this is also a tool. It became a tool for for bands to actually start to analyze things. Because honestly, my experience is. Coming back to your first question, very first question, is it is it even possible in a larger scale, you know, to get to US? I think in 95%, it's not possible with 95% of artists from Poland because they are simply not focused, you know, they they don't have a proper goals, proper motivation. You Grzegorz mentioned you need to love what you do, and I think this is you know something to underline because this is how the whole independent scene always was operating and easily becoming international, and, you know, accessible all over the world because it's passion driven. So you have to have all those things like intellect in terms of your goals and, and heart, big heart in terms of your, uh, you know, motivation and, um, and then you're ready to step forward. But this is less than 5% of all those bands who are thinking like, hey, we should go to South by Southwest, you know, and, and try, uh, you need to ask yourself a question, is it my first market? You know, is it the first foreign market I should, I should go to? Because, uh, you know, the myth of American career is still strong, but the reality is hostile sometimes, and we know it. So, so, so the big question mark is, is it, is it my first, uh, and most important markets, second to Poland, of course, or should I actually try with something more accessible than the US? You know? You've mentioned gasoline and, and, and uh, the plane tickets. Um, are this money also, uh, can, can they also go for like a hiring PR company? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That was the, the, the anything you need on your way. If you need, if if you have to borrow, uh, you know, if I need to buy instruments, a new guitar because my old one is like you know, 
maybe not good enough to play in the United States, so I can buy myself a new instrument as well? You can buy things. This is uh, as long as you, I don't know, buy an uh, online camera to, to do your home showcase or something. <laughs> this, is, this is not for, uh, for, for, for buying stuff, but uh, definitely you can apply to peer support or backline support. Actually, anything you need. You know? like when, if you need to pay for ability of being a part of, uh, of a nightliner together along with three other bands, and that's a part of the deal. You know, we do it. Uh, just a quick reminder to, to uh, people watching us on, on YouTube. Uh, there is there is this, uh, our guests' uh, questions if you if you want. Um, we're talking about do's. So we're talking about what to do to 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 get it in the United States. And what about don'ts? I mean, what are the biggest misconceptions about uh, American music industry? Uh, or biggest mistakes that bands from abroad do, Brian? Huh, that's a really huh. good question. Really good. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I think it goes back to kind of what we were all saying. It's just like you don't want to... Um, you don't want to over-push something, maybe, or you, you don't want to... If you're drawing five people at a show in Poland, you don't need to come and toward the United States, you know, like you need to, you kind of need to work on your craft and, and work on it at home um, and kind of build, build, build it up organically. Like, I, I just don't think you, just cause you've been in a band, you know, for X amount of time, you're like, we should tour the States. That's the next thing. I, I think it's just like, you only want to like start thinking in the United States or other countries because you've done everything you can maybe in Poland or there's, you actually have statistics or like, you know, whatever, a, that you have people listening to you like on Spotify in the U S um, or you have, you're able to get a grant and there's, or there's a way to get to the U S easily. Like you could, you could lose a lot of money coming over just to come over. Um, so you don't, you don't want to do that. Um, yeah. I mean, you could definitely end your band if you come over here and spend 10, dollars $10, $15,000 and play to five people a night. I mean, I'm sure you and your bandmates aren't going to get along after a few nights of that. In realizing that, I mean, I've I've seen it happen. I've seen bands break up from overseas in America because it went really poorly for them. Um, so I, you know, I, I think you would have a reason for coming over, um, and make sure that's a pretty sound reason. If it's like you got a record label behind you, like know certain press people are going to come see you, like you have a South by Southwest thing, um, some booking agency, for example, yeah, a booking yeah. agency. Um, a band that's able to do shows with you, but it's it's really hard if you're just going to come over by yourself with without any support behind you. Like it's just it's probably not going to work out for you 99 of the time. I think this, this uh, adds to the yeah. Oh, go on, go on. Yeah, I, I just wanted to mention like I I, I feel like the this aspect of local market positions is pretty pretty solid and important like literally if you if you if you don't have ability to build a certain capacity on, in your own country then why you're thinking it's going to work abroad and the other way around there are bands who actually i think polish market or in case of any european country is you know local market is just too small we have to go abroad to, you know, to reach more audience, to have ability to play more gigs. And I think this is proper, uh, proper, proper way uh, to do it. Yeah, but you can, you can start by like, um, yeah, if like you're in a small town and there's only 10 people that go to shows anyways, of course, you're doing pretty well if you get eight of them out. <laughs> but then you want to, you know, you want to go to other countries around your country first. Um, maybe and then like kind of build from there like you it, you don't want to skip steps and go from like your town of 500 people and drawing 10 to being like I'm going to play a show in LA now you know like the, um, I mean of course with that said I've seen plenty of amazing bands where I'm one of like three people at the show and I'm like I can't believe there's not a thousand people at the show this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen I mean that always will happen and how good you are doesn't necessarily mean how many people are at the show but it's just kind of the reality of the economics behind it, um, you know, I think in the end. 
And some bands are willing to like, they know they're going to lose X amount of money going on tour and that's just what they love and that's what they're passionate about. And that's what they want to do. And that's, that's great. It's just like, you have to be prepared, be prepared for the worst and hope for the best, I guess. Mm -hmm. Did you learn from your own mistakes or did, or maybe you didn't make any mistakes? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, do I'm doing all the time uh, mistakes and Brian knows about it and, and, and many people knows about it. I think also <laughs> you know it. about it and, and Michal, Michal knows about it. I think that I, I make a lot of mistakes uh, and I'm still learning, but I think that I'm really good in turning mistakes into kind of a crazy success. And I, when I'm talking about success, I'm not talking about thousands of people and... Uh, And, but I'm talking about some vibe, about some friendship, family, artistic vibe. And I think, uh, uh, yeah, but every, 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 every mistake I made after all was a kind of a, you know, great family, friendship, happy end. So, so for me, really, the, the, the being in music business and even call it, call it music business is kind of a strange situation because for me, The, the, the music business and music industry is rather a fa family industry or, or uh, industry full of French friends. Uh, so for me, it's a real pleasure. It's a real pleasure to, you know, to talk with Brian, to talk with with David, with uh, with Glitterbeat Records, with Anya and Henry, with you guys. Uh, for me, it's not a super hard work to do, but for me, it's a pleasure and. Uh, Of course, we all want to win in some way, but I think the, 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 the most important way is the way, not the, you know, the, the top of a hill. So, so uh, yeah, I think that, that making mistakes is really cool. Yeah, and, yeah, we're all human. We're all going to make mistakes. But you and like, accepting these mistakes. mistakes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't like, you know, not over worried about it. Yeah. But like Trupa Trupa has like a, you guys have a plan, like you guys have been working at it for years and kind of like, you know, you, you have a vision for what you want to do. And that's why it's, you've been able to like do it well. It's like you, you can visually see like what you want to happen and you guys really work at it. Um, and you're very passionate you. about it. Yeah, yeah, um, next have... year will be our year. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, Brian, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I, I think, yeah, I mean, I think you just, you just have to be very passionate and realize like in the end, you're, you're playing music for you and your bandmates and you're hoping people are going to also enjoy it. Um, and yeah, if, it, if you're treating it as a business, like you were saying, then, and you're trying to like maximize profit or like not, you know, like make a lot of money, like it's, you're probably going at it wrong. I mean, Hopefully in the end you can make money playing your music. That's like the best thing in the world, but it's not, it's such a small amount of people that are able to do that. So you kind of want to yeah, know and, and, what you want to do. And, and I, I think it's the, the biggest message uh, to, 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 to Polish music industry about, about the money stuff. You know, yesterday uh, or two days ago, I read this Guardian article about Discord records. And uh, there was this sentence, they, they, they started to make money up, Eight years after the beginning of the, the, the label, yes. Yeah. So, so, so you know, when, when of course everyone likes money, uh, but 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 I think that, that the Polish artists are, uh, you know, they, they they are focused on the career for them means money, and and I think it's not it's not like that really. In most of cases, money are are not not so fast. They are really rather rather um, really late. Uh, So I think that the passion uh, and they, and uh, you know ability to risk is is, is most important thing, and every I, I think everyone should watch the movie of Werner Herzog. It's called Fitzgeraldo, and it's it's a movie about uh, Brian Fitzgerald. Brian, yes, and he's uh, wants to yeah he wants to move a ship over the hill, and he's doing it. After all, it's a big failure. But the way was more the way and the dreaming was 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 most important in this process. So I think that being a lunatic and a dreamer is the best thing uh, in the world, really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you if you want to make yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel better now. <laughs> I mean, if you're if you're trying to make money in the music industry, I mean, your best 
being like a studio musician or like writing songs for commercials or things like that. Not that that's easy, but you're a lot more likely to make money that way than being in a touring band most of the time, um, mm -hmm. making original music. Uh, Michal, you've seen uh, lots of artists trying to make it in, in the US. Um, uh, you've worked with them. And uh, what kind of mistakes did you see? Or was the... Uh, uh, was the one that that Gregos, uh, was was saying like mistaking uh, money for career the most common one or any other ones? Mm, this one is more valid in terms of European markets than the US. You know the focus of money, like the quick money, and this is why why it doesn't doesn't go any further. I think we already discussed those mistakes. I mean, uh, you have to know. Um, you have to know your position. You have to know where you are and where, where you want to go. And I have this constant impression, like most of the bands traveling from Poland to US, they just don't have it. They just have an imperative to go to US and that's the end of the story. And this way it's it, it never going to work because it's going to be just a fun trip, um, quite expensive to be honest. And you know, and sometimes this fun trip can also turn into nightmare, like Brian said, like the band might not be ready to, you know, to meet uh, the reality, you know, for shameful venues and playing for the doors and, you know, all m many other small differences, which are basically not that common in Europe when you tour, tour in Europe. And that might, you know, lead you to to the end of the story, to the end of the band, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I think it's, 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 it's a matter of, of, of your plan and, 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 and the size of your dreams. You know, if you're, you need to ask yourself a question if, if you're ready to do that you know, and no matter what. And I, w I mean, I don't know if it's like this still, but it used to be at least in Europe, like a lot of the clubs, like if a US band came over or just even bands within Europe touring, they would get, you know, they would feed you dinner. They'd probably find you the place to stay and things like that. In the US, you're on your own most of the time with that stuff, which is an added expense. Like there are situations where you can arrange that stuff, but it's not, or maybe they'll give you like a dinner buyout of $5 a band member, or there's some clubs will give you dinner, but it's not, it's not a normal thing necessarily where you're going to get the accommodations you would like touring Europe. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely more expensive. Um, and you're not going to necessarily get a guarantee of money either. A lot of times it'll just be a door deal, which, you know, in Europe also a lot of times you'll get the guarantee. But in the U.S. law, clubs won't do that, especially with a foreign band. They'll just say, we'll give you X amount of the tickets sold. And if five people come and they say their overhead's $300, you're literally getting $0. Um, so it is, yeah, it's, it can be rough. And I, sorry, sorry for interrupting you, but but I, I think that also important thing is, I know it will be very, it will sound very naive, but but that that you you should be, you should act like yourself, and you should be yourself, and you, I think that you shouldn't copy, copy paste uh, American or U, or UK artists, and I think most of Polish artists are uh, that that want to break, make breakthrough. Uh, in the Western uh, culture, they 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 are co copying uh, and they are they are they are imitating uh, Western culture in some way. Uh, and I'm talking about accent. I'm talking about compositions. I'm talking, you know, about being Polish. P.J. Harvey. You know what I mean? Uh, I I think that, that that very cool thing is that, you know, if you don't have one teeth, it may maybe it's 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 also cool. You know what I mean? And maybe if you got one eye or not, but it's also cool. And if you are got one hand and you're playing on the guitar with your one hand, it's also cool and bizarre. And I, I think that being from Poland is really special in the way that this country was so devastated by history uh, and it's so full of trauma that I think that we are really strange, big, big strangers and we shouldn't imitate normal people. Well, you, you, you bring up a really interesting point, which, um... This personally, I, I think drives me crazy sometimes. Is like I've gone with bands to Japan a few times and like, well, all over, but like, I always find it interesting. Like, you go somewhere, let's just say Japan, where the language is a lot different and they're singing in English. And like, and I'm like, why aren't you just singing in Japanese? Like, well, because 
we want more Western people to like our band. And I'm like, I would appreciate it more if you were actually just singing in Japanese. Like personally, like I would think that was more beautiful. Like, and then maybe you'd have a lyric sheet that had the English version of the lyrics printed out for English speakers. But I, for whatever reason, it, sometimes I, I find it weird that like, um, you know, if I'm in another country listening yeah. to a band and they're singing in English, I'm just like, you know, just singing your, sing your native. I, I, I agree, but you know, you can always find your way of singing in English. For example, Trupa Trupa with these fucking great minimalistic texts. Yeah. Well, okay, I was just going to your point of bands trying to like, you know, like I, I think sometimes it, I think it's more interesting maybe to people in other countries when the the band is actually just representing where they're from and not. Yeah, I, to agree, be like, I, 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 I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Like just keeping with your own sound, your, you know, and just doing your own thing. I think that I think that's more likely to pull people in in a way. I agree. Um, I have a question uh, to Grzegorz from Dagadana. Hello. Hello. Um, how do you they see the future of? They were playing on Glastonbury, right? They were playing. Right. Yeah. Congrats. Uh, and how do you see the future of your touring uh, uh, in US, considering new higher costs of, of visas? Uh, do you plan to get some the sponsors on, on that, or 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 don't you worry about, uh, or you don't worry about this at, at this point? Yeah, the, well, not, not, we are waiting for end of pandemia, but 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 anyway, we will come back to USA to to record another tiny desk session and to make some tournée around it, and we will have to to apply for new art visas, and they now they are really expensive, and uh, well, we will find some money. You know, we 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 we, we always uh, find some. Um, Money. So Michal, Michal knows that I uh, that, 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 that this is this is the whole truth. Mm, of course, it will be, I guess, more difficult than earlier. I understand it, but I think that we've got really good project. This tiny desk session is a really nice project for Polish culture. So I would be really surprised if the Polish institutions wouldn't help us. If you hear me, please help me. <laughs> Okay, we, we're talking uh, about your experiences and, and rules that worked in pre-COVID times. Uh, do you think uh, this pandemic will change the rules uh, or, or should we expect for like for good? Or should we expect things go uh, back to normal uh, in a year or, or, or two? Who? It's a complex question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I Who know- should, um, uh, Brian? I was gonna say, I mean, I, I think the, the kind of like the the simple answer to that is that, or the the thing that's most obvious at the moment is there's gonna be less venues in the United States to play, which will cause a rolling issue. Um, I mean, just in Washington D.C., we've had a you know several clubs shut down over the past couple of months because they haven't been able to have any shows since March, and the the um, local and federal governments don't have the money to really help prop them up. Um, so once this is finally over, I'm like, just in DC, there might be half the clubs there were before, maybe even less than that. Um, new ones will probably pop up, but I think in the, you know, for the year or two future, there'll just be less venues for bands to play. There's a lot of bands that it was their livelihood to play live music. So everyone might start going out all at the same time to these fewer clubs. So it might be, it might be really hard for the next year or two for um, smaller bands to get to get shows at, at traditional venues at least, because there might just be less and too much competition. Um, there are always non-traditional venues that pop up. Um, they're just sometimes harder to, harder to find, especially if you're coming from overseas, but um, I'm sure in a couple of years we'll straighten out, but I, I think in the immediate future, it's gonna, that will be definitely a huge problem for touring bands. Yeah, but we love problems, so, so we will solve them, yeah. Yeah. But it's just hard. It's harder if you don't have the contacts to solve them, is my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There'll be a lot of new things popping up, but it's just going to be, it's going to be a bit of a shit show for a while. There's no doubt. I think people will go back out to live music. I don't think it's going to happen within a month or two of the vaccine. I think people are going to slowly feel comfortable with it. Um, so we could be talking 2022, really, for things to be normal in the U.S., is my guess. 
Mm. And Mihao, how do you think? I mean, uh, are you preparing like different scenarios for for next year's for next year uh, uh, in the institute? Yes, we do. We we think offline and online. So actually, we don't want to give up our original ideas, but we are heavily thinking, overthinking things and, and preparing scenarios for, for a longer lockdown. Personally, I can say I also do the same as a booker because I, I, I also have a second job. And uh, it's always like having plan A and plan B. Like the plan A is usually for me the, the original schedule of the bookings with American artists, for example, which I don't say, uh, you know, a year before, like, hey, we need to cancel. You know, I try to keep this as long as it's possible until it's impossible, then I cancel. And, and, and it is logical in terms of uh, the venues who can survive this moment that we are, we are becoming more, more, uh, more focused on the local stuff. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to go back to normal situation. I mean, I'm not sure even if the situation we had was normal, but that's the other discussion. Let, let's cut it off. But uh, mm, I expect something like, you know, we, the old, the old people, we, we, we just experienced that. You know, we know it from the 90s, early 90s, where there were just not so many things happening. You know, like you didn't have, uh, the headliners from foreign countries every every day or uh, every second day or every week, and uh, you, that that was something more like a special special event. So maybe that's that's the future for for a couple of months when we we going to become more open. And I see like the big festivals has still chance to survive, you know and. If you had, if you'd ask me, I see like the the big opener festivals can can be still attractive after all, and they 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 gonna go back to its place immediately. It's uh, it's a bit worse situation with the smaller players, you know, smaller festivals, smaller venues, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So a lot of them will 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 be vanished, um, and I don't know. I sometimes think this is the purification process because uh, I totally think we we left. The landscape in, in, in uh, I mean, with, with lockdown, we left the landscape of, of uh, over consuming everything in every aspect, also the cultural aspects. So for me, that's, it's, it's not that bad so far. You know, it's not that like I'm, like I'm a fan of COVID situation. I'm not, but you know, it, it always have, you know, the second side of the coin. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, there are some people uh, that that say that uh, we'll eventually get so used to online shows that we we really don't want to uh, go back to the real ones uh, uh, when they actually uh, are going to be back. Uh, do you think that uh, might be the case? Do you believe in that? I mean, no. we would have to wait till you know, two more generations to come. You know, those who never experienced that. It's like dating, you know, like you have to go and meet someone. It's, it's, it's the same. You know? Yeah. I get, whenever I do the, like the online shows, I, I just get distracted and bored within like 10 minutes. Like, it's just not the same. Yeah, Cause you're just like, oh, it's on my TV. I'll watch it later. Or like, you just, I don't know. It's just not right. It's fine mm -hmm. for now, but I just, yeah, there's no way I would, I would ever choose that over going to a live show. Never. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, well, that's an optimistic note. Let's 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 end on this. Uh, thank you very much for 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 your time. Thank you for uh, sharing all these words of wisdom uh, with us, and and uh, hopefully see you at some festival, at some show. Uh, well, in the spring, in, in, for for example, in Lublin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why? Why not? I do, I do, I, why, 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 why? Yeah. I, I do want to say I hope I hope I, I didn't want to discourage anyone from coming to the US. I just wanted to tell people that it is it is hard and that you should do it for the right reasons. That if you're really passionate and love your music, you should certainly do it. I know. I I, I know a couple of times I just said, you know, the percentage chance of it working out was low, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't if your heart's in it to it, you should you should follow your heart. It was just as a practical yes. matter, it's not the easiest thing to do, but 
if if you're someone with a lot of passion and drive, like you know the members of Trupa Trupa, you can make it work. You just have to really believe in what you're doing and and push through. Okay, I agree. Thank you. Thank you. See you in L. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks, thanks. thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.